Donald Trump is responding to the Republicans who refused to rally behind him as the party's nominee. Now, here's what he told ABC about the party being united. I think it's a mistake not to do this. We want to bring the party together. Does the party have to be together? Does it have to be unified? I'm very different than everybody else, perhaps, that's ever run for office. I actually don't think so. I think that. It doesn't have to be unified? No, I don't think so. I think it would be better if it were unified. I think it would be, uh, there would be something good about it, but I don't think it actually has to be unified in the traditional sense. I'm a conservative, but don't forget, this is called the Republican Party. It's not called the Conservative Party. You know, there are conservative parties. This is called the Republican Party. Here with reaction, former 2016 Republican presidential candidate, the former governor of the great state of Texas, Rick Perry is back with us. Governor, how are you, sir? Sean, oh, very good, thank you. You were harsh against Donald Trump. He was not your next choice after you got out of the race to win, but you're supporting him. Why? Well, this is pretty simple when you get down to it. Donald Trump is going to be the Republican nominee, and we're going to have a choice between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And the next president of the United States is going to appoint at least one, probably three Supreme Court justices. This is as about a no-brainer as you can get from my perspective, uh, is that when you really get down to it. And, and listen, yeah, I was harsh. I was harsh on Mitt Romney. I was harsh on a number of people. They uh, reciprocated. That's the way the process works. But Sean, that's what we're doing. We're going through a process here, and Donald Trump is going to be our nominee. And, you know, I'm going to support him because the alternative is an absolute disaster. I was down at the border with you. I believe he'll build that wall. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. He ran strongly on it. Also, he said he will release the names and create a pool of, of candidates for the Supreme Court, and he would only tap into that group of people. So conservatives will know ahead of time the type of justices that he would appoint to the Supreme Court. Uh, he says he has a judicial philosophy similar to both Scalia and Thomas. You think that'll give conservatives that maybe are on the fence uh, some hope that things will be a well, lot better and different? Than it, it certainly should. And, and, you know, when you hear him talk about, listen, Washington didn't, doesn't need to be deciding education policy in Washington, D.C., devolve that back to the states. I mean, that's a Tenth Amendment uh, supporter speaking there. And that's what I want in a president that doesn't believe that Washington knows everything, that all power evolves out of Washington, D.C., that the states are, you know, 50 laboratories of innovation. He believes that. And I truly believe that Donald Trump will devolve that power back, will make Washington, D.C., DC as inconsequential as it can be. And that, I think, is what scares a lot of people who really have never seen that and they've never, you know, they've never supported that concept. But if we're truly going to be Republicans, we're truly going to be conservatives, then that Tenth Amendment needs to oh, really it's huge. You know, mean. There's a whole list of those issues, though. And he said he'd repeal and replace Obamacare. And he said he would appoint conservative justices to the court, uh, originalists. He told so, me many so times. I, yeah. I think you've made the point here. You've made the point about why people like me are, are going to be supporting Donald Trump. I mean, we agree on a whole lot more yeah. than we disagree on. I mean, if you want to split hairs, if you want to get your panties in a wad over this issue or that <laughs> one, that, that's fine. But the point is, Donald Trump is going to be our nominee. He's earned it. And we yeah. need to respect that, that he's worked hard. Uh, you know, he wasn't my first choice. Matter of fact, he wasn't my second choice. But he's our nominee, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we have an individual in the White House that's going to put people on that Supreme Court that are going to affect my kids 40 years from now well with said. decisions. I want somebody that is going to put a conservative and a constitutionalist on that court. Here's Trump on being blindsided by Speaker of the House Ryan and by Mitt Romney, and I want to get your reaction to this. I like Paul Ryan. I think he's a very good guy. He called me three weeks ago, and he was so supportive. It was amazing, and I, I never thought a thing like so you're this. Stunned. I got blindsided by this. You feel blindsided by him? No, I would say stunned is a little bit, uh, it's politics. I'm never stunned by anything that happens in politics, but uh, I'm not, so I'm not, uh, yeah, I was blindsided a little bit because he spoke to me three weeks ago, and it was a very nice call, a very encouraging call. I helped. Mitt Romney a lot. And you feel like I he did. was ungrateful? I, I really, I, I believe I won him or helped him yeah. win five states that he was going to lose. Sounds like you think he was primaries, ungrateful? Okay? You think he's been ungrateful? He, he was. He was ungrateful, which is okay. A lot of people are ungrateful, but he was <laughs> ungrateful. He did not, they did not respond accordingly, and that's okay. What is your reaction? The Speaker of the House, he doesn't do a lot of interviews. He goes out and purposely does this interview to shoot that, give that shot across the bow to Trump. Why? Why would it, doesn't that seem like sabotage? 
I, you know, I, I can't answer why the speaker uh, has given that uh, answer, given that response. Uh, I will suggest to you with a little time, uh, like in a lot of things in life, uh, we say things that are harsh, uh, but when we've given some thought to it, you know, what is the long game here? And, you know, Speaker Ryan and, and Mitt Romney, they understand the long game. And the long game is we must have a Republican as the next president of the United States. And I, I'm trying to keep this simple. If for no other reason than those Supreme Court decisions, yeah. those Supreme Court appointees that are going to occur in the next four Let years, me ask you this. we've got to get that right. I've talked a lot about two things that I think would be good. Number one, a, a, a promises to America, put it down on paper because people feel betrayed. Number two, a team of rivals. If Donald Trump calls you governor, I think yeah. you're one of the most successful governors in the country. Would you take his call and maybe be a part of his team? Well, sure, and I've said that. And I think that is important for people to look at what uh, he's going to do and who he's going to do that with. Bringing in individuals, particularly on the political side, who have a lot of experience on how that process works. Like he said, listen, he's got the business side of this thing covered. Uh, he feels pretty comfortable about his military side of it. You know, I, again, I, would, I, I hope I have the opportunity to share with him a little bit about the military side of it, not only as a veteran, but also as commander-in-chief, as a governor. And also also just the relationships that I've had over the course of those years. And I'd certainly be open to having conversations about helping him in any way that I can. And any good American should do that. We should not allow any personal pettiness uh, get in the way of getting this country back on yeah. track again. Governor, that's a powerful statement tonight. I hope other people hear you. Thank you, sir.